Can you say with 100% certainty that neither ByteDance nor TikTok employees can target other Americans with similar surveillance techniques? Chair Rogers, I first of all disagree with the characterization that is spying. ByteDance owns TikTok. If ByteDance is told, and, and the CCP owns ByteDance, so they can make you hand over that data. Is that correct? The data is stored here in American soil by an American well, company. You say that. <laughs> TikTok CEO on the hot seat big time. Five and a half hours facing lawmakers on both sides. They got fury. They had the facts. They talked about spying, surveillance, data manipulation, all at the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. He really had nothing to say. Here to talk about the future of TikTok and so much more is my very special guest, Washington Post columnist, best-selling author, Josh Rogan. He's, this is the name of his book, Chaos Under Fire, Trump, Xi, and the Battle for the 21st Century. Josh, great to see you. Do you think these lawmakers made it clear it's in our best interest to ban this app? Yeah, I think there's very few things, Brian, in Washington that bring together such a bipartisan consensus. Uh, but this is one of them, that TikTok's presence and its influence and its ability to scoop up Americans' data and use it, and the fact that that data is vulnerable to the Chinese Communist Party, is something that everyone now has to admit. Even though the TikTok CEO won't admit it, it's obviously true. This is not only a vector for uh, invading Americans' privacy, it's a vector for the Chinese Communist Party to insert its influence into our information space through the phones of our children. And uh, now there's a lot of agreement that we have a problem, but there's less agreement on what to do about it. I don't know that the ban is really uh, uh, going to get uh, taken up by Democrats. I don't think the Biden administration has the guts to go through with it and fight the legal battle that would follow. So I think that, uh, you know, we're not all the way there yet. At least we can admit that we have a problem. We expose the problem, and if the president doesn't address it, then it's really on him because we can't seriously take on China without doing it. They're doing a comprehensive hit on us, one of which you point out and write about is on colleges and in high schools, charter schools, uh, and, uh, you know, and border schools. What are they doing? Basically, what the Chinese Communist Party does is they try to co-opt our democracy by seeding our institutions with tons and tons of illicit money. And we find this on U.S. campuses all over the place. Donations. They sponsor a China center, but it's traced to some foundation that it owes its success to the CCP. They use proxies. And then they use Chinese student organizations, in some instances, to watch the Chinese students on campuses and make sure that they don't say anything against the CCP. And they want to ex exploit the fact that here in America we have an open system. We welcome Chinese students because we want them to learn learn about freedom and democracy and what it's like to live here. But then they abuse that openness in order to try to buy off these institutions. And uh, that's something we just can't abide by. No doubt about it. Headlines this week, uh, there's a lot. Uh, but Russia and China, uh, a, a vow of solidarity for each other to reorder the world. Not my opinion. It's their words. Let's listen. Watch. Look at the subtitles. Now there are changes that haven't happened in 100 years. When we are together, we drive these changes. I agree. Take care of yourself, dear friend, please. They over their skis. Can they really reorder the world? They're giving it uh, their, the whole college try. They're really uh, doing a lot of damage to the world. I mean, think about what this new world order looks like. Uh, death and destruction in Ukraine, a genocide in China, the breakdown of any any semblance of a, a of a relationship where where the free countries and these dictatorships can even try to get along not because we don't like them because they're acting crazy and starting wars so this new world order is really a, a dystopian nightmare that they want to unleash upon us they want to make a new world order that's safe for autocracy and repression and you know i get it americans don't want to spend a lot of blood and treasure defending democracy abroad. But if we pull back, then this is what happens. The bad guys advance, and they're announcing it. They're not being shy about it. They just announced it. They celebrated it, actually, so maybe we should respond. Our superpower is our currency. They're moving off our currency. Let them try. You know, in, in the end, people don't want to do business in the Chinese yuan. You know why? Because it's based upon a statist economy that's corrupt, okay? The American dollar is still the most reliable form of exchange that in the world and will continue to be for the next generation. If the Iranians and Saudis want to start selling in Russian rubles, good luck with that. It's not going to go well. Josh Rogan, your contacts in these areas are uh, 
are bar none the best. Thanks, thanks so much for your insight. Hope people Anytime. understand how serious this is. Josh Rogan, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.